Welcome to Caravan of Garbage, everybody. Uh, look, this movie, Godzilla yes. 1998, is the first movie that I realised that movies can be bad. <laughs> Oh, as a, do you mean right now or do you mean as a child? <laughs> no, no, as a child. Because, you know, uh-huh. I'd go and see everything and everything was great. You know what I mean? You'd, I'd go and I'd, I'd watch the Ewok movies. They were good. I'd watch uh-huh. Independence Day. Yeah. People love the first one but hate the second one. They're both about the same, as in not that great. For sure. I b- agreed. And coming into this. Yes. You remember the trailer, right? Everything about this, all the lead up was great. The trailer where it's at a history museum and it's a it's a dinosaur museum. They're like, look at this big dinosaur. It's, it's the, the biggest, biggest dinosaur. dinosaur. <laughs> thing you've ever seen it's so big and there's nothing even bigger than this and then the big Godzilla foot comes in and crushes it and we're like whoa there is something bigger we all thought yeah and there was the building that the dinosaur was housed in <laughs> but also Godzilla this trailer cost six hundred thousand dollars alone huh and they cut it from the movie it was yeah, supposed right. to be in there they didn't even end up putting it in uh-huh. for some reason yeah right the funny thing about this movie is they spent years trying to get the rights from Toho to make an American version of it because there was gonna be one prior to this but like a Immediately prior, right? Yes. It was going to... And it, I, I've seen some production stills and some, like, test models because they got to the Sam Winston yeah. studio to make stuff and they look good. It looks like Godzilla. It looks like Godzilla. Like, kind of a longer neck, I think. Yeah. Like Godzilla, yeah. yeah. You, you recognise it. Yeah, for and sure. We'll get into the design. Okay. That is for sure. The, another reason that people got excited for this is because the writing by Dean Devlin, directed by... Um, Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich, yeah. Both of them had come off the back of both Stargate and Independence Day, which were huge oh, hits. Yeah. I still have never seen Stargate to this day. I've read the novelization. <laughs> yep. I've never seen the movie. So you've probably seen, you've probably imagined all the many scenes that were cut out. So Dean Devlin, and he has gone on more recently to direct Geostorm. One of your favourite films. One of my, my favourite films. Mm-hmm. But their idea was that it's going to be like Tim Burton's Batman to Adam West's Batman. Right. That was what they were aiming for. And I think they were also aiming for like Jurassic Park. Yes. But like gritty and cool. Yeah. I, I feel strongly that that's, that's where they were headed. But it's know? way dumber with worse characters. I was speaking of characters. Okay. This is something that I didn't even notice when the movie came out. The mayor is Mayor Ebert. Yes. And his sidekick is a guy called Gene. Yes. That's Siskel and Ebert. Not an accident. No, of course, of course, well, of course not. But I didn't. I wasn't aware of who they were at the time. Yeah. But it seems to be like, haha, you made fun of my previous movies. This will teach you. I'll put you in another of my movies, which is very bad. <laughs> doesn't teach him anything. No. Like, imagine if they'd made Godzilla 98 and they'd put Siskel and Ebert in it, and this movie was incredible, and, and these two were like big doofuses in the movie, then you'd be like, huh, they did make a great movie and you guys were wrong. But they're not wrong. Those two guys actually, they commented on this when the movie came out. They said, well, we're in it, but he doesn't do anything with this. Like, no. we're not stomped to death or anything. They don't really make fools of themselves. It's just like a guy's like, I'm the mayor of New York. And the other yeah. guy's like, maybe we should... Bro. And I mean, that's it. There's it, nothing to those, I mean, they those make, characters. They, exactly. They're, they're the guys who are like, well, I don't think you should evacuate the city. But I mean... Half the cast is that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's that's every character in every one of these disaster movies. <laughs> so Toho actually gave a 75-page dossier over to the American creators okay, for right. Godzilla. Right? And these are some of the things that, that they said just to steer away from. Yep. Godzilla cannot eat people, only fish. Uh, he has to have three rows of dorsal plates, no more or less than three toes on his feet and four fingers on his hands. He cannot be made to look silly. He cannot die in the movie. And all of these points were... Ignored? <laughs> were, were disregarded. Yeah. Right. Wow. yeah. Uh-huh. This is the guy who um, designed Godzilla, Patrick Totopoulos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does that name sound familiar? Uh, Nick Totopoulos is uh, Matthew Broderick's character in the movie. I love that running joke where people can't say his can't name. Can't say his name. <laughs> sim- a very simple name with a limited number of syllables. Like, I just can't say it. All Roland em- Emmerich said was, as long as he can run fast. Apparently he can run 200 miles per hour. That's the... Uh, I mean, I don't get the sense of that because he can't catch a taxi at the the end of the movie. I mean, everybody can in New York City. That's, you know what I mean? right, right, right. <laughs> That's probably a thing. I've never been there. Well, exactly. It's not like it's set in the American Midwest where there's just rolling green fields that he can charge down. Yeah. He's almost exclusively fleeing in the middle of the New York business district. Yeah. Can't get up to 200 miles an hour. So this version of Godzilla, uh, the origin is, well, they keep the nuclear origin. Yes. Nuclear. Nuclear. Mm-hmm. But it's an iguana. It's, it's a mutated uh, iguana, yes. Yeah, it's yes. heavily implied. Mm. The French are bloody bombing the crap out of the Pacific. You remember that. When that happened at the start, I'm like, I remember that. Yeah. Do the French have nuclear weapons? I looked it up. They've got 300. Yep. <laughs> I double-checked. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, way less than others. Yep. But still some. 
But Godzilla in this, you might be wondering, wh where is Godzilla what, what, this entire time? 11 minutes of screen time. And you might think that's not a lot, which it isn't. Mm. But apparently the new one in 2014, I looked this up, eight minutes of screen time. But people huh. also complained about that. I think that's probably true as well, yeah. Yeah. And also in the next one, it's going to be all Godzilla it's all the be time. One hundred thousand. But yeah, look, minutes. I'm not. Su I'm not surprised that there's so little Godzilla in this because it looks bad and it's composited in really bad. Boy, is it. There's a scene where. Uh, Harry Shearer, who's the head of the newspaper, I think, or the, the TV station, yeah. is on the phone and he doesn't see Godzilla behind him. Yes. And that's because it's a really, really obvious blue screen. Yes. The worst one, I think, for me is when some soldiers are underground and you see the big Godzilla eye. Yep. Mm -hmm. That one, for me, is atrocious. Yeah. But there's a lot of it. There is some practical shots with Godzilla. Yeah. Like, there's a bit where you sit there, go into its mouth, and there's uh -huh. some hand bits and stuff, and uh -huh. this and that. But they went, no, let's, let's go for something realistic but it has aged hard. Oh, there is a man in a suit for some of it. So apparently originally they were going to go with motion capture Yeah, and it looked too much like a man in a suit. Yes. So instead for a lot of it they went with a man in a suit. I, re I thought it was like 10 shots or something. Like it's not a lot though, right? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. It's like very limited. Mm. The, so the original script that they discarded apparently had a lot of cool things in it. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, but this movie's already filled to the brim with cool I things. I know. Uh, Roland Emmerich said it was something I would never have done. The last half was like watching two creatures go at it. I simply don't like that. What? Isn't that the point of yeah. most of these movies? Well, the, the previous version, it was going to be... That's what I want to see in a Godzilla movie. Yes. I want to see it smash a different monster. That's why, it's been su that's why this thing has been successful, you know, it was successful... Too many decades. 40 years, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, like the, the original version, the, the previous version of Godzilla that we're going to do, it was going to be Godzilla versus the Griffin. It was, it was like, I guess it was a mishmash of some of the famous it's Godzilla monsters. One. But it was like a flying dragon-esque kind of thing. And at the end, he was, I believe he was going to tear its head off and like spike it on the top of the Empire State Building. Nice. Yeah. Like a 90s basketball reference. Exactly. Or football. Versus Charles Barkley. Versus Charles Barkley. So, I love this bit because when Patrick Totopoulos, mm. did I say that right? Yes. Great. When they showed it to Toho, because they had to get it approved, yeah. they were speechless and there was silence for a couple of minutes. Then they said, could you come back tomorrow? <laughs> and they thought, Kiss of death. Yeah, they thought it was going to be like, oh, we're done. But- like later it was said it was so different we realised that we couldn't make small adjustments well exactly so they just went yeah alright because it's not it, like again for the original Godzilla is this enormous bottom heavy bottom heavy creature that stands primarily on its hind legs yeah and it's just this huge beast built for just tearing cities down. And this new version, by comparison, is this weedy little, yeah. zippy little iguana creature. Yes. The thing is, there's no, you can't, you can't tweak that in post no. to be like, make the fins a bit bigger. It won't change it anything. No. I don't hate the design. It's not a good Godzilla design. No. Yeah. But the creature design on its own, yeah. when it's not moving, it, I think it's okay as a mm. monster design. Yeah, right. It's not uh -huh. brilliant. It's kind of Z xenomorph esque. Would you say that? Like a xenomorph yeah, and a raptor. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, sure. that kind of uh -huh. feel to it. These are the things I like about this movie. I've listed them. Okay. I really like the bit where it's shattering the pier when it's coming into New York. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's a sure. great shot. Okay. There's some weird compositing with the guy running down going, uh, I've got too much. I've had too much that I'm bargained for or whatever. He's <laughs> running. He's got, he's got too big a fish. It's I think you're going to catch the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I like the bit where, where Matthew Broderick comments, A lot of fish. When they pour a lot of fish. What is that about? Why Why would you include that line? That's a lot of fish. Like, because the other guy doesn't even say anything. Is it like for the people who don't know what a pile of fish looks like? <laughs> I guess. I mean, there is a, there, there's so many lines that are clearly in there for dumb audience. There's like, how could a monster that big just disappear? Well, obviously it went back into the river. It went back in the river. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Speaking of going back into the river, I really like the shot where it dives into the river, takes a mm -hmm. running dive. Uh -huh. I like that. Do you like Matthew Broderick's weird beret? No. Situation? Why is everyone going to win? Weird beret in this movie. No, I don't like it. Uh -huh. Matthew Broderick is completely without charisma in this. Okay, but who's with charisma? Who's the John Reno? He's I was, amazing. I was gonna and say Hank I was gonna say who's the um the Jeff Goldblum of this of this uh of this movie. It's John Reno. Mm -hmm. And John yeah. Reno's hamming it up and he's chewing the gum. He's like, I'm American, and he does it an Elvis Presley impersonation. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. I like Sean Reno a lot. Okay. I think he's good in this. He is good. What about the rest of the people who are clearly drawn from like early to mid 90s sitcoms? All <laughs> like, the other actors. Like the, like the redhead that yeah, first uh -huh. meets Matthew Broderick like and she's like, he's a bloody bit of aura. I'll yeah, tell you what, look that, at this guy. Yeah, I think she was probably from News Radio. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. Yeah. There's three Simpsons actors in this. Yep. So there's Hank, Hank Azaria, Harry Shearer, Harry Shearer, and Nancy Cartwright's the one who's like, look behind you, there's a Godzilla. And he's like, I don't see anything. I'm too busy looking for a big story on my <laughs> telephone or whatever. Oh, yeah, right, uh huh. 
You know what else doesn't age well? There's two helicopter chasers. Okay. One with three helicopters. And he's saying both the helicopter chasers don't age well. Both of them aren't good, but the okay. second one more so. Because the second time there's a helicopter chase, there's just a hundred. And they're all darting and <laughs> yeah. weaving in between the yeah. buildings and narrowly missing each other. In retrospect, look, I understand they want a, they want a flashy action sequence. But it fascinates me that they went, you know where we should lure Godzilla? Right into the middle of the city. <laughs> and then just fire missiles and, and cannons at him. At everything. At everything. <laughs> and destroy the flat iron building and destroy the Chrysler building. It's and... fine. It's fine. Don't yeah. even worry about it. Because mm. they do it twice. The second time they lure him in, they're like, or she. Mm. The second time they do that, <laughs> yes. they're like, no, we've got to be careful not to shoot any of the buildings around Godzilla. And they still do. Yeah. It has all the things in a Roland Emmerich Dean Devlin joint that we've come to know and love. Oh, yes. The Mm -hmm. Smug authority figures getting their comeuppance. Absolutely. And it's crap. I don't think <laughs> these guys have made a good film. Look, I know that's just me because I hate disaster movies. Mm -hmm. I hate every single disaster movie. Every time I say this, I get a lot of grief. Twister is a terrible movie. Right. It's not a good movie. The thing about this movie is Godzilla isn't an antagonist. No. He's just like a, like a dumb animal that wants to live its life. Yes. And they're just shooting missiles at it. Yep, yep. It's rude. It's very rude. This is the kind of shit I hate in movies as well. Like, when characters aren't written like real people. Because Matthew Broderick goes in to get a pregnancy test. And he's like, I need some pregnancy tests, but I need one. And he's like, I, and he names some specific chemical compounds. Which is gonadotropic hormones or clomiphene citrate. You, you're a real person in the real world. Mm. And this is a person who's working at the counter of a pharmacy. You just <laughs> go in and you say, I need some pregnancy tests. Like, you don't need to prove that you're smart. Yeah, right. We see uh -huh. your beret. We know. We know. We, know, we, know. we get it. Exactly. And I, and I love how they justify calling it Godzilla like you need to because they have a tape of the first boat that's attacked. Well, one of the guys is on there and he's, it's a Japanese dude and he says Gorgita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or however you, I know I've said it wrong. Don't fucking at me. All right. <laughs> and then the, the newscaster is like, says Godzilla. Mm. But there's no way that you could make that mistake. Right. Like, so don't justify it. Just be like, well, this is what we're calling it. Yeah, right. Why doesn't anybody believe that the nest is real for Matthew Broderick? Because he gets the tape stolen from his former flame. He's, yeah, he's, right. His first love. Oh, yeah, I remember. And then they're like, you're out, Matthew Broderick, and every theory you've ever had, even though you've been right every time, <laughs> is wrong, and we're not going to look for Godzilla's nest, and it's definitely not pregnant. Don't even worry about it. Like, why do they disregard that? Just because somebody took a tape from his room. Because they've worked backwards. The script, <laughs> Dean Devlin, our old best mate, has worked backwards, and he's gone, okay, at the end of the movie, there's going to be a nest of Godzilla eggs, and they're going to be right on the verge of hatching before they're destroyed. So how is it we're going to ha say that nobody has taken any action before this? Well, we'll just say that nobody believes him. It's a very long movie, right? Because you think it's kind of wrapping up, and then it's just Jurassic Park with the raptors for like 40 minutes, mm. running around the bloody stadium. Again, and... Jurassic Park, like clearly they wanted, again, a, a cooler, grittier version. But you can't do that if everything about your movie's bad. Like Jurassic Park, the first time we see the dinosaurs. It's daytime yep. in a field. You can touch them. You can see them breathing. They're, yeah. they're there. They're, they're as real as can be. And in this, again, they just look like it's everybody staring at a green screen. It's clear also with the baby ones. Mm. The ones that are puppets and ones that yeah, aren't. Right. It's uh -huh. very evident. Mm. And sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll eat you and get up right close. And other times like a chandelier will drop and they'll, and they'll just step right back. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they don't yep. feel like a threat because they only eat the French. <laughs> that no, <laughs> that nobody sure. knows the and names of. who amongst of. us is the French, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it leads into that street chase I was talking about with the taxi. And this is another example of dialogue in it. They go into the, the mouth of Godzilla and then they're like, We're in its mouth! We're in its mouth! <laughs> like, we all see it. Yep. And everybody in the car knows that you're in its mouth. It's an unnecessary piece of dialogue. Uh -huh. And then they shoot it to death. <laughs> the yeah, and again, like, <laughs> traditionally Godzilla, invulnerable to, to all mortal weapons. Yeah. That's, that's the, a key element of this, of this being. But nah, just shoot some missiles at it, I reckon. Yeah. Well, we know now that this is not considered a real version of Godzilla in canon. So this, this was referred to, I believe, by a reviewer at the time as Gino, mm -hmm. Godzilla in name only. Yeah. The Japanese creators of Godzilla have taken referring to a version of this character as Zilla. Yes. Because the god is, the, the god has been taken away, is what they say. Let's just call him Zilla. Yeah. Because he's a knockoff. Yeah, kind of right. Thing. He's, yeah. A, he's, a, he's a poor quality copy kind of thing. And we see it murdered in a follow-up Godzilla movie. Yeah, it is in 
Godzilla War. For... Godzilla Final Wars, I yeah. think. Where, but, and he's dispatched in like, I want to say 15 seconds. Is he smashed into the opera house, maybe? Yeah, it's, it takes place in Sydney, so I believe he is. In fairness, that's in a big sequence where Godzilla takes out a whole bunch of monsters in like 10 seconds each. So it wasn't it, it wasn't, wasn't, just, a, it wasn't just that one, but it's definitely that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the sequel, because they were going to make a trilogy. They were going to make a trilogy, it was true, The yeah. second one was going to be in Australia, and they actually spun this off into a TV series. The only one in the world that remembers that is you, the Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla animated, animated series. series. Yeah, so the the Godzilla sequel, it was gonna it was gonna make the the last remaining Godzilla baby was gonna grow up. Yes, and it was gonna have children as well because they're born pregnant. Yep. Uh, and include like there was going to be a couple and a, and a runt of the litter as well. Okay. And then Nick Totopoulos was going to go to Australia. It's Totopoulos. I know you said. That. I know you said that. <laughs> and he's going to he was going to go to Australia. It was going to imprint on him. Then it was going to go to Australia, and he was going to follow it to Australia. And then the the army was going to attempt to destroy it again. And then they're like, no, actually, he's with me this time around. Oh, you know what? There was going to be a giant swarm of bees. Okay. And a giant bee esque monster called in the in the script the Queen Bitch. <laughs> Yeah, so that, who says there's no good female roles in Hollywood? Absolutely. So that was <laughs> oh, gonna, so that was going to happen, but then it didn't because obviously nobody yeah. cared. So instead, it was turned into an animated series where the final remaining baby Godzilla again imprints on Matthew Broderick's character and then grows up to be a giant Godzilla that is now sterile. So there's going to be no more Godzillas. In in one episode, it fights the original Godzilla who's been brought back from the dead right. as a cyber Godzilla. Great. Yeah. The series was, I believe, more well regarded than the movies because they were like, you know what, let's have him fight monsters every week. Because that's what people Because that's what people actually say, wanted. Yeah. But it also killed there was a there was a Godzilla toy line from Treadmasters. Oh yes. Oh, and it bankrupted them. It bankrupted them, yeah. And so initially the, the sales were really good. Yeah. Because people, people were excited for this movie because yeah. it looked amazing. And now this company no longer exists. Also, Sony knew this was bad because the studio executives saw this movie three weeks before it's release and they recognised that uh, it wasn't going to be what they hoped for and expected it to bomb. Uh, this led to them expanding the marketing to ensure a strong theatrical opening, which happened. Like, it made money. It yeah, didn't right. uh-huh. tank. Well, we were hyped. We, we were know? very hyped. We were so yeah. hyped. One more thing. Dean Devlin, uh, the writer of this and producer, aggressively defended this movie on internet boards. Uh, oh, this boy. is at the time. <laughs> on Usenet, probably. Telling Godzilla fans to hell with you uh, if they have a ne- negative opinion. Uh, the official Godzilla message board was shut down soon thereafter due to all the heated arguing. And years later, Devlin admitted that uh, he's recognised the movie's faults and apologised to fans in various interviews. Wow. So everybody learned to lesson even even dean devlin himself and the fans i think have learned a lesson because you know what looking back on this movie it's not that bad just kidding it's, <laughs> it's fucking so, awful if it's I can, really if, bad if i can just go back to roger ebert again because sure. in looking because i'm like maya ebert and i looked it up and then of course he's got a review of godzilla okay yeah. this is his review because it was it premiered at Cannes in france at the Cannes film Cannes! Festival. thank you in france going to see godzilla at the palais of the Cannes film festival is like attending a satanic ritual in saint peter's basilica <laughs> It's a rebuke to the faith that the building represents. Khan's touchingly <laughs> adheres to a belief that a film can be intelligent, moving, and grand. Godzilla is a big, ugly, ungainly device to give teenagers the impression they are seeing a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Classy stuff. Anyway, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. We uh, suffer through one of these every week. Sometimes it's a good thing. Uh, believe it or not, but <laughs> if you've got something to <laughs> to recommend, mm. uh, it could be a video game, it could be a TV show, it could be a comic, it could be a movie, it could be an audio drama. It could be a novel, just kidding. We will never do a never, novel. Never, ever. Uh, also, there's videos every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday, and we, of course, have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That happens every Monday morning, and we've got one for the new Godzilla King of the Monsters which by all accounts is better than this in every single conceivable way. There's no way it couldn't be, right? I agree with you, Mason, on that. Thank you. Thank you. And mm. thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. And goodbye. Goodbye.